The time has finally come for me to do a massive brain dump of the gear, the settings, and all the tips and tricks related to my mountain bike action camera setup. I've been riding the best trails in the world for the past seven years as a full-time job. I've learned quite a lot, and it's time for me to bestow it upon you. All right, let's start with the gear. First and foremost, the GoPro Hero 12 Black. There are other cameras on the market. They seem to be doing a decent job if you're gonna watch videos on your phone, but if you wanna watch videos on a big screen TV, you want the GoPro Hero 12 Black. The GoPro is not perfect, but it's durable, it's reliable, and it gets the job done. I also use the Max Lens Mod 2.0 to do my software stabilization so I don't have to wear a mechanical gimbal anymore. I use this SanDisk Extreme Pro 256 gigabyte card to record all my footage. I use the Rode Lavalier Go microphone all wrapped up here in my chesty mount so it's all attached and I don't have to mess with it on my body. I've also got one of these fuzzy wind mufflers which is absolutely key to killing the wind noise and making everything sound really good. This is the GoPro Performance chest mount. And this is a Quicksilver belt that I've had since maybe eighth grade, 25 years now or so. And this helps me strap in the chesty to make sure it doesn't bobble around too much. I'll show you my setup in a second. I also use the GoPro Media Mod to make sure that I can plug in an external microphone. I've got this bag that I got at a farmer's market in Boston that keeps all my extra stuff inside of it. I take as many GoPro Enduro batteries with me as I can possibly carry. I carry two 256 gigabyte memory cards with me as backup at all times because I have had memory cards go bad on me during a ride. I also always ride with an extra Max Lens Mod 2.0 because these lenses are so vulnerable to crashes and scratches and an extra is so nice and small to bring with you. It's very easy to switch off and put on a new one if something happens. And finally, a very essential bit of kit, the GoPro tool, which helps tighten up these little thumb screws or loosen them when they're way too tight. I have a full list of all the specific gear and the specific settings that we're going to talk about today on my website. Check out the link in the description and you'll also see the number one link in the description is from today's sponsor, FlexiSpot, the best standing desks in the business. I'm going to talk about them a little later when I talk about editing. So this is what my setup looks like. I mount the GoPro upside down. I strap the chesty in right here and I try to make sure that this little piece is right in my sternum. I have the GoPro mounted upside down because when I get in that attack position, it gets the clearest view of the trail. My microphone does a great job picking up the trail noise, picking up my voice, and very, very rarely will you actually ever see it come into camera frame. So this setup does not work on really rough terrain. It bobbles around way too much. So that's why I add in my belt here. This belt is really nice because it's so adjustable. I can cinch it down very tight or a little more loose if I wanna actually be able to breathe. There's still a little bit of movement here, but the software stabilization takes care of that. No big deal. So hopefully you can see my little mark here that I have to set my angle of my camera. Every time you take off the GoPro and put it back on, you have to figure out your angle and what works best for you. I suggest using some tape when you're first figuring out your angle, and then when you've got it set, use a knife to cut into here to score it, because if you use marker or paint or something else, it'll just come off after a few rides. I think the most popular way to run a GoPro is to wear a full face helmet and then mount it to the chin bar, which makes for pretty good head stabilization. It also makes for a pretty good shot, but for me personally, I do not like not seeing the GoPro. I like being able to look down and see if there's water or mud on the lens because one little dot on the lens can ruin a whole ride. I like being able to look down at a glance and see if I'm actually recording or not instead of asking everyone around me, hey, am I recording? <laughs> Is it on? I like being able to look down and check the audio levels very quickly. 
All these things you have to pull over on the side of the trail, take the helmet off, and look at the GoPro if you're running a full face. I really like having a little bit of leg action, a little more bike action in my shots. Not too much, there is a whole balance to that. I do wanna still be able to see the trail up ahead, to see the person riding in front of me, but I feel with the full face, all you can see is the arms and the handlebar. You're not really getting that full picture. You can do a super duper wide angle to get everything in the shot, but I feel like that just deteriorates the whole enjoyability of the video. So let's go through all my various settings on this first page. Well, I guess it's actually technically the second page. On the second page, I have the voice activation off. I have the beeps on. I have the quick capture off. I have the screen lock thing on so I don't accidentally hit something while I'm riding and change settings and switch to some other mode. I have whatever this is off. Okay, yeah, I have it mirrored. <laughs> I have it uh, set to be uh, that one. Status only. I have my orientation locked to be upside down all the time. Basically, you have to get that orientation set and then click that on and then it'll hold it there. And I have Max Lens 2.0 turned on. Okay, let's go over to the third page. Controls Pro are on and now let's dive into the general preferences. Under general, I do low beep volume. I leave quick capture off because I am super paranoid and superstitious basically that if the camera's recording all the time, that there's something weird going on and it's not to my benefit. Default preset, last used video, auto power off never, because I want to be able to go on a long climb and turn the GoPro on and start recording quickly. <laughs> I know that totally, <laughs> it uh, contradicts my quick capture off, but I, I just don't trust quick capture. And all LEDs on. Under the video preference, I have my bit rate set to high. This takes up more memory card space, but the quality will be better. I have the bit depth at 10 bit and I have anti-flicker 60 hertz. Under mods, I have max lens 2.0 turned on and the media mod turned on. So now let's get into the actual video settings. You click on this little oval here to get in there and then this little thing on the right side. I do 16 by nine, 4K, 30 frames per second, wide, which is, you know, it's punched in a little bit, but I found with the Max Lens 2.0, it's super wide when you start doing the other wide options. Too wide for me. Always have Horizon Lock turned on. It looks so nice with that and Max Hyper Smooth on. You should definitely experiment with all these settings and kind of see what it looks like to you. For me, this has the best mix of quality and stabilization. Schedule capture off, duration no limit, hindsight off, timer off. Let's go into Pro Tune here. I do uh, auto shutter, I do minus 0.5 EV compensation. Uh, white balance auto is probably something I need to change now that I have a bright orange bike. The white balance keeps getting messed up, so I pretty much have to go with a certain amount of white balance when it's a cloudy day and a certain amount of white balance when it's a sunny day and just do it manually. ISO minimum max on auto, sharpness on medium, color on vibrant, I like a vibrant color, raw audio off, wind on auto. The wind stuff doesn't matter so much because I have the medium mod attached. I don't do any shortcuts on my GoPro because I don't want to accidentally change anything. The screen lock helps with that, but this also helps with that. Just nothing, nothing to touch, nothing to mess up. So before I actually hit record on every single ride, I always make sure that I can tap my microphone and I can see the levels are registering. That means the microphone is working. Many, many times I've had the microphone glitch out on me for some unknown reason, and it has ruined so many clips. So I have to be very paranoid that the audio is working. The next big thing that I do before I hit record is I tap on the screen here, I hold down, and that starts some spot metering, some auto exposure. I don't know, it says both things, so I don't know which one to believe. So I always try to make sure that the exposure is in the top center of the frame because really that's where most of the action happens. That's where my eye is always going on the trail. All the trail actions happening up here. I only started doing this after I got back home from Slovakia and I saw how bad the footage looked. Man, it was just trying to totally compensate for the sky and the ground and both things looked bad. 
So the spot metering hopefully has helped with that. I'm not 100% convinced, but I feel like my footage is looking better. So before I start going deeper on even more tips and tricks for recording and all that, let's talk about my editing gear. I use a 16 inch M2 MacBook Pro from 2023. It has been a fantastic upgrade for my peace of mind with how fast it edits and just feels smooth all the way through. My previous laptop was pretty good too, but it was not as fast as this one. I dump all my footage to and I edit from external hard drives. They are finally fast enough to actually keep up with the pace of high impact video, giant files. If you get the wrong external hard drive, it's going to bottleneck your whole system. I replace mine every couple years because they start to get slower and funkier and they just get cheaper and faster and better. This is a Crucial X10 4 terabyte external hard drive for $289. Unreal. And of course, my FlexiSpot E7 Pro standing desk, the centerpiece of my working life now and the fine sponsor of today's video. I have got three of these amazing standing desks now at my house, and you may remember, I spent the first five years or six years editing my videos for this channel hunched over my dining room table in a weird bar stool type thing, a total mess. The FlexiSpot E7 Pro has been a game changer for all of this. It is time for you to get rid of your piece of junk desk, move off of the coffee table, grow up and get a real desk. And right now in November is always the best time of the year to shop for a FlexiSpot desk. They do sales every single day. Check out the link in the description before it passes you by. I got Sarah a desk last year. We got the same E7 Pro desk that I have, but she did it with the white frame and a dark bamboo top. She also got the monitor arm, a small drawer, and of course, a sweet little foot hammock. Whether you're six foot four or four foot two, you can adjust the standing desk to be as high, low, or any place in between that you need it. The E7 Pro is heavy duty. The motors can handle 350 pounds. I don't know why they can do that, but they can. And this desk is so stable even when it's fully extended. And the thing I just got from FlexiSpot is this cable management tray. I tried to do my own cable management. I need help. This thing's gonna hopefully help quite a bit. I have had so many bad desks and chairs throughout the years. I just dealt with it. Don't deal with it anymore. It's time for an upgrade. Head on over to the FlexiSpot website. Also check out their office chairs. Sarah and I both have the C7 Premium Office Ergonomic Chair, and that thing is a dream to sit in. FlexiSpot does free shipping. It has a 30-day return policy and a 15-year warranty. I'll tell you what, even as someone with a big van that can load up a couple desks and a couple chairs, I would much rather just order it online and have the delivery guy take it right to my front door instead of trying to struggle in a car and driving back and forth. <sighs> just check out the link in the description. It's time to upgrade to a FlexiSpot desk. So let's talk about some of the trade-offs that come with the more modern non-gimbal software stabilization of the last few different GoPros. For the first five years, six years of my channel, I ran a GoPro Hero 4 with a mechanical gimbal, and that's all I needed. I just had a little wind muffler on top of the GoPro Hero 4, it looked great, it was 4K, it was stabilized because the mechanical gimbal kept everything steady and nice, and the audio sounded absolutely fantastic. Low light situations were perfectly fine because the shutter speed could drop down and you could let in more light and you would actually get a little bit of motion blur and it looked pretty cool. The problem was you were always worried about batteries. You had to have a battery for the GoPro, you had to have a battery for the gimbal. Later on, they kind of fixed that where it was one battery, which worked really good, but it was still just a big bulky thing with all kinds of batteries that got in the way, that would hit on the handlebars. But honestly, 
I, I really liked it. It looked great. It worked great. It was just cumbersome. So now we've traded that cumbersomeness for only having to use one battery and the Enduro GoPro batteries are absolutely fantastic. I usually get about 90 minutes out of each GoPro Enduro battery, which is unheard of to get one minute per 1% out of a battery. Back in the day, you get like 15, 20 minutes out of a battery and you have to swap. But because we're using software stabilization and the latest and greatest GoPros, when you have low light situations, everything turns terrible. If you're on a wide open hillscape at golden hour, the GoPro is just going to look fantastic. It's gonna be like, man, this is just the most amazing thing ever. But once you duck into the deep dark woods, the picture gets muddy, the stabilization does not work as well. And I just always hate it so much because I know when I'm riding in the dark, the video footage is gonna look terrible. I was hoping things would get a little bit better with the new GoPro Hero 12. They didn't, but I don't think they got worse either, so that's good. So if you just got your brand new GoPro and you go to Moab, you're gonna love it. So let's talk about the GoPro audio for a second. It is possible to not have to run an external microphone if you buy a bunch of these little wind muffler things and you get double-sided tape and you cover up every single microphone that's on the GoPro. I think there's three microphones in various places, maybe four now. I've heard some setups that actually sound pretty good if you check out MTB Allen's channel. His chin-mounted GoPro setup looks very amazing, sounds really, really good too. But for me, I would just rather use the media mod, plug in the external microphone, put the dead cat over the mic, and everything is good to go versus uh, the constant stickies and one fell off and then everything sounds bad. It's not for me. So once you actually get good audio with your GoPro, you realize the first rule of recording your mountain bike footage is no sniveling you will immediately realize that every little sound you make gets picked up by the microphones, especially if you're sniffing, sniveling with your runny nose every 30 seconds. So I have learned to just let it go. Let her drip, let her rip. You will also learn very quickly that your bike makes way more noise than you ever imagined and you will drive yourself crazy trying to track down every little snip, snap, clip, clap, crick, crack, and pop that you hear. And then sometimes when you get a new bike, and everything is perfect and amazing. It's like, whoa, this is just, just beyond fantastic. And then that lasts for about five minutes before things start making noise again. If you wanna take your audio up a whole other notch and you're riding with someone in front of you that's very boisterous, that has stuff to say and will add to the video, you can use the Wireless Go 2 system to wirelessly mic them up and have that record to your GoPro while you're talking as well. It's a pretty cool system. It adds a lot more complexity, it adds in glitches, it adds in things you would have never thought. Like when they're talking and you're talking at the same time, the GoPro has a very hard time actually recording that on two different tracks. So then you have to actually go in to the hardware here, plug this in and download this track, yada, yada, yada. It adds a really, really cool dimension to the videos. I stopped doing it recently because I just thought it was just too much of a headache. But if I know I'm riding with someone that is going to add a ton of value to the videos, that's gonna talk, that's gonna have a whole banter, and the video is gonna be elevated by both of us participating, I will definitely do it. But most of the time, it's just me talking to myself going down the trail. A couple things that are worth getting into the habit of every time you start a ride is to go into the GoPro app and to sync the date and the time and then to also delete all the old footage from the GoPro as long as you think you've downloaded it. I have had the wrong date and time so many times, whether it was because of changing time zones or some other random problem, and then you take a bunch of footage with your phone or a different camera, and none of that footage lines up. You're like, wait, where was the horse? Where was the waterfall? And you're trying to like kind of figure it out. If all the time is synced up perfectly, it'll go together in your editing software really nicely. 
I know formatting the card and deleting all the video files every time is actually a little scary, but if you trust your workflow and verify that you downloaded all your files from the previous ride, double check, make sure they're there, it's okay. You can just format the card, delete it, or swap in one of your backup cards because you've got that extra 256 gigabytes on you at all time, right? And as my voice begins to die, I've got one more thing for you. I keep a Ziploc bag with me at all times with two or three of these microfiber cloths inside. Whether it's raining or it's crazy humidity, you have to keep your lens dry. Software stabilization is a pain because if there's any mud or water or even a scratch on the lens, you'll see in the footage everything kind of bouncing up and down and it's just so distracting and very awful. So you got to be paranoid and keep your lens clean. Oh yeah, and I also keep everything in here all the time unless I'm out on the trail. It's very good to keep everything organized in one place. This is the Milwaukee Packout, kind of a smaller one. I can keep the GoPros in here, the batteries, all my various accessories in one place. Instead of losing them, misplacing them, they have a home. All right, that was everything I had in my notes that I've been gathering over the past few months. But if I miss something, please leave a comment, ask a question, hit the like button, and do me a favor, go ride something new and maybe I'll see you on the trail.